Are you looking to pick up an ultralight fishing rod? Well, you're in the right place. See, over the last couple years, I have picked up and tested like 20 different ultralight rods. So I have a really good understanding of what's available on the market. And I like to think that I can help you choose a rod that's gonna fit your needs. Now, last year I did a video just like this. It was the 2021 ultralight rod breakdown video. And I talked about every single rod I'd tested. The difference today is I'm doing the 2022 ultralight rod breakdown and I'm gonna go through various price ranges and I'm gonna talk about which rods stand out to me most. I obviously don't have time to talk about every specific rod that I've you know, picked up and fished with, but if you want to see more information on any given rod, you can take a look at the playlist below. I will link that in the description. In that playlist, you will find each individual rod breakdown video so you can really find out a lot of information and see how these things perform yourself. Um, that being said, I do want to call out just a couple more things before we get started with the budget-friendly ultralight rods. Number one, I do not talk about things that I have not experienced myself. So every, every rod that I talk about today is based on actual experience. I have tested them. You know, there's certain rod companies though that I've never picked up and tested, so I can't necessarily speak to those. So for example, I've heard really good things about like Phoenix rods. I've never fished them, so I can't necessarily talk about them but you can definitely stay tuned because I will continue to pick up and test new rods over the next couple years. And so hopefully in future videos, you will find out more about some of those rod companies. The next thing that I wanted to call out is if I don't specifically mention a rod that I've tested in the past today, that doesn't mean I don't like it. It just means that there's other rods that personally stand out to me more. The one thing that you always have to remember when it comes to fishing rods or just fishing gear in general is that personal preference is a huge deal. So my preferences are going to be what I talk about today and that's based on experience and that's based on a lot of fishing time on the water, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the right rod for you. So if you need further information, again, you can check out the individual videos or you can always drop a comment below and I'm happy to help as best I can. That being said, let's get into the ultralight rod breakdown. I'm gonna talk about the budget rods first, and then I'm gonna make my way up to the most expensive rods. And then by the end of this video, again, hopefully you've got an idea of what's gonna work for you. Let's get started. Kicking us off with the most budget-friendly rods, rods less than $40, there are two that stand out to me. Now, I don't have them anymore because I've given them away on my Instagram, and that's what I do with a lot of the stuff that I don't need anymore. So I don't have a lot of the rods I'm gonna talk about today, but that's just solely because as I accumulate more gear, I pay it forward and I give it away. So follow me on Instagram if you ever want a shot at a free rod. That being said, the two rods that really stand out to me the most for less than $40 are the Akuma Salilo and the Shakespeare Micro Series. These two rods are available across the United States. You can find them online, you can find them in stores, and they're both really great. You know, they're extremely basic. They have really, you know, lower quality components, but at the end of the day, they catch fish. The one major call out I have about both of these rods is that the longer length you go with, the more whippy they become. So personally, I would recommend they're a little bit shorter models, the, the five foot range, the five and a half foot range. They seem to be just a little bit better for detecting bites and maintaining a feel over your bait. Once you get into that six foot six or seven foot rod, they're so noodly that it's kind of hard to feel what your bait is doing. That's just my perspective. If you really like a noodly rod, obviously you can go with a longer model. But for me, I would recommend like a five foot six Salilo. I think that's a great rod to do a lot of things with. Now moving into the $40 to $70 price point, there are two rods that stand out to me. And these are both awesome rods and quite frankly, I feel like they outperform the price that you pay for them. First, you've got the 13 Fishing Defy Silver. Second, you've got the Shimano Sensolite. These rods are actually extremely similar and they're both available in five foot six or six foot six lengths um, for the ultralight power. You can also get them in a light power, but across the board, I feel like their lineup is really good and I would definitely recommend both of these rods. The Sensolite feels just a little bit stouter than the 13. Um, and for that reason, I think I like the 13 just a little bit more personally, but overall, I feel like you can't go wrong with either. They're both very fast and they're great for jig fishing, but I feel like you can get away with other techniques on them as well. And that brings us to the 70 to $110 price range. Now this is where a lot of rods live. I've found that there are a lot of great options in this price range, but there are three that really stand out to me. First, you've got the Daiwa Presso Travel Rod. This is a four piece rod and it comes handy in a little travel tube. Now I've actually given mine to my brother-in-law and he's been catching a lot of fish on it and he loves that thing. Um, but I loved that rod. I thought it was such an awesome rod because 
one, it's versatile, but two, it's still a fast action. And it really performs, quite frankly, like a one or a two piece rod. It's hard to even notice that it's a four piece travel rod when you're fishing with it. I highly recommend that rod right there, especially if you're the type of person that really wants something portable that you can throw in your backpack, throw in the trunk of your car, take on an airplane, so on and so forth. The next rod that I would say I definitely, definitely recommend is actually the Temple Fork Trout and Panfish. Now I have fished with the five foot six, the six foot and the seven foot in this series. And I gotta be honest, one thing is consistent across the board. I like it. These are extremely versatile ultralights. I feel like you can fish jigs effectively. I feel like you can fish spinners, little crankbaits. It's just a very versatile rod. And I also really like the fact that it does well for both trout and panfish. And I feel like it's just built for true versatile ultralight fishing. So for me, this is probably one of my favorites. And I would say for around 90 or hundred dollars, I don't think you can get a rod that is a better one size fits all. And then there's one more rod in this price range that jumps out to me and that's the Daiwa Procyon. I think it's around $80. I actually gave mine to a friend. Um, but the thing about this rod that's really cool is that it's a solid tip rod, which is so uncommon for less than $100. When I say solid tip rod, that just basically means that it's got a carbon tip and it's extremely fast. So for that reason, the Procyon is an awesome jig rod. So if you're like a, a big jig fisherman, you know, throwing a bunch of 132nd, 116th ounce jigs and you want to go fishing for panfish or smaller bass i could not recommend the procyon more for that price range and that leads me perfectly to my next price range and that's basically 110 to 200 dollars i've tested a couple rods over 200 dollars price and i don't think they're worth noting i just don't think they're worth it so i'm going to talk about two rods that i do feel are worth it and they're more like 160 bucks First up, you've got the Daiwa Kage. Now I've talked about this rod a lot in the past, and this one's actually pretty similar to the Procyon. The difference is you're basically just trading up big time in the blank. The Procyon compared to this feels, you know, much cheaper, right? Because the Kage is a high performance rod. The blank is just higher quality. It's extremely sensitive. It's got a really comfortable reel seat. This is a really, really good jig rod, but it's got a little bit more versatility than the Procyon because I feel like the Procyon is just a little bit beefier. Um, definitely one of my favorite rods to fish with, but the one that I actually like even more than the Daiwa Kage is the Dobbin Sierra Trout and Panfish. Now, I did a video actually comparing this to the Kage and they are super, super similar rods, but ultimately there's a couple little things. The rod butt is just a little bit bigger and then you can put your finger on the blank. So I kind of like that. Um, the other thing is it just feels marginally less fast than the Kage. So I feel like you've got just a little bit more versatility with the Dobbins, just my perspective. Um, but ultimately this is actually my rod to beat. I have not fished with a rod that I like more than the Dobbins. This is my favorite ultralight personally. Um, and again, this is a solid tip model. So it's really good for like jig fishing. I've actually got a drop shot rigged up right now, but it's extremely sensitive and it maintains a true fast action. I feel like you can do a lot of things with this. It's probably not as versatile as the, the Temple Fork, but I feel like you can still do a lot with it. So ultimately, this is personally my favorite rod. Now, before I close out today's video, I do wanna call out that there are a couple of rods that I've tested from like Asia. So the Major Craft Fine Tail, these are not domestically available rods, so I chose not to really talk about them. But I will say, if you're comfortable purchasing things from like Japan, there's a lot of really good ultralight rods available over there as well. Anyways, Ultimately, today's video was just to help you understand some of the different rods that I've personally used and what I feel are really good options for the various price points. If you have further questions, drop a comment below. Otherwise, as the weather gets better, you can count on me to do more ultralight rod videos. And I'm gonna to continue to test these and maybe in 2023, we'll do another one of these videos. Thank you so very much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Oh my gosh.